Hello everyone, welcome back to Dakin Cuts. So today we'll be taking a look at a really interesting approach to solve geometry problems. And along the way, we'll be using this to prove one theorem, solve an AIME problem, as well as solve a classic geometry puzzle. So without further ado, let us take a look at what is this method. So this method is known as the method of width. And to explain the method, we will first need some basic facts from physics. So this might be intuitive to many of you, but if you have a seesaw configuration like that shown, in order for the seesaw to be balanced, we will actually require this equation to hold. So m1 times the distance a equals to m2 times the distance b. So for those of you with physics background, you will recognize that this is basically the principle of moment. Now, there's even a two-dimensional version of this rule. So basically, this is a top view of a 2D uh, board, and the yellow rod here is basically beneath the board. And if this board can balance on the rod, then we will actually require m1 times d1 plus m2 times d2 equals to m3 times d3. So this is just a recap, and this is an if and only if statement. Yeah, so this uh, actually balances the moment clockwise and anti-clockwise relative to the rod. Now, even if you are not very familiar with physics, hopefully this makes intuitive sense to you. And we are going to apply these concepts to solve geometry problems. And how do we do this? Now, suppose you have a triangle ABC. And what you do is pretend that this is a triangular plane. And at the vertices, so this is a top view again. At the vertices, you are hanging weights. So you have weight 2, weight 3, and weight 4. And suppose that after putting the weights at these locations, P is the center of gravity. Now, if I extend AP to meet the point D here, what can we say about the ratio BD to DC? The interesting thing is we can pretend that we put a rod beneath the triangular plane along AD and because P is the center of gravity, basically the triangular plane will balance about the rod, right? So now we apply the principle of moment and we see that weight 4 times the perpendicular distance to the rod equals weight 3 times the perpendicular distance to the rod. So this means that the perpendicular distances are in the ratio 3 is to 4. And because uh, the triangles here are similar, the right angle triangles here, this means that BD to DC is also 3 is to 4. So basically, skipping past all the intermediate reasoning, we have converted the mass ratio 4 to 3 into distance ratio 3 is to 4. And similarly, you, if you extend CP to meet at F, then the distance, uh, the length ratios here is 4 is to 2 because you look at this weight ratios is 2 is to 4. And similarly, BP extended to E cuts AC into the ratio 3 is to 2. So this is actually quite intuitive. But I want to talk a bit about the converse. So it's quite important for us to be able to replicate center of gravities. What I mean by this is suppose we start now with an empty triangle and a given interior point P. Can I find weights to hang off A, B, and C such that the center of gravity is at P? Yeah, so this is a bit of the opposite. Now, Fortunately, we have already done most of the hard work. Basically, to recreate P as the center of gravity, what I do first is I extend BP and I ask myself, I find out what is this ratio of the lengths here. So if let's say the ratio of lengths is 5 to 6, then you know that you need to hang weights in the ratio 6 to 5. And then now I extend another length, CP, and suppose that I find out that the ratio of length is 2 to 3, then all I need to do is hang weights 3 to 2, and because I put a weight 6 here, 
then I should put a width 4 here. And now if we look at this triangle, the center of gravity that's called P prime, we know that P prime must equals P. Because by what we saw in the previous slide, now that B P prime extended will cut the length into ratio 5 to 6. So B P prime is the same line as B P. And same thing C P prime is the same line as C P. So P prime must be the same point as P. So we have recreated the center of gravity to be a given specific point. Now, if you are one of the astute viewers, you will probably realize that we didn't really use um, the line AP. Now, since the weights here are forced to be 4 to 5, does it mean that we have forced this ratio of length here into 5 is to 4? Well, we have basically just proven Siva's theorem. So if you recall, Siva's theorem says that if we have three Sivians like this that are concurrent at P, then the ratio AF over FB times BD over DC times C over EA equals to 1. And indeed, in this case, what we have shown is that if we put A, B, and C as the weights that replicate the center of gravity at P, then the ratios are given by the respective ratios of the weights. You know, AF over FB is B over A. BD over DC is C over B. C over EA is A over C. And the weights cancel out to give 1. So we have just proven one direction of Siva's theorem. And of course, the other direction, uh, I'll leave it as an exercise, is an easy proof by contradiction. Okay, so that's pretty amazing. We have a one-line proof of Siva theorem by using physics. And now what's even more amazing is you can use this method to provide very simple solutions to Olympiad problems. Some of these problems can be quite hard without this method. So let's take a look at two examples. So firstly, it's an AIME problem. So we let P be an interior point of triangle ABC and extend the lines of vertices through P to the opposite sides. Okay, now let A, B, C, and D be the lengths of the segment shown here. So in particular, these three lengths are supposedly all equal and they are equal to D. Okay. The problem here is we need to find the product A times B times C if we are given that A plus B plus C equals 43 and D equals to 3. So, if you were to try some other synthetic method to work out this problem, it's actually going to be quite difficult. But fortunately, with the method of weights, you have a very nice way of dealing with ratio of lengths. So the whole thing about method of weights is to deal with ratio of lengths. Now, we suppose that x, y, and z are weights that we hang off the triangle such that P is the center of gravity. We saw earlier that we can always replicate uh, the center of gravity to be a given specific point. Okay, now, so far we have only talked about how the weights here allow us to calculate ratio of lengths along the sides of the triangle. But actually, Using the principle of moment, you can also deduce information about the ratio of length of these Sivians inside. Let's see how to do this. If we actually put a rod that is parallel to the side AB, what we notice is that now let's apply a principle of moment. The perpendicular distance of this weight x is the same as the perpendicular distance from uh, y to the line. And this distance, compared to that perpendicular distance from c to the line, is in the ratio d to c. Because of similar triangles. You see the perpendicular distance here, and this perpendicular distance, they are the same. When you combine with the length d here, you do have a similar triangle relative to c perpendicular down and this length here. So the perpendicular distance are also in the ratio d to c, which means that if you apply the principle of moments, c 
over d equals the sum of the weights here x plus y over z. Okay, so this is uh, just the principle of moments combined with similar triangles. Similarly, if we put a rod parallel to AC underneath it, then we will have B over D is equals to X plus Z, the weights here, over the weight here Y. Okay, and then lastly, if we put a rod parallel to BC beneath here, then A over D equals Z plus Y over X. So what I've just done is I've managed to convert information about the ratio lengths inside into information about ratio of the weights. And this is useful because if we actually take a look at adding up these equations, you have A plus B plus C over D on one side, which you know is 43 over 3. That looks promising. And on the other side of the equation, you have the sum of this, which you can combine into one fraction. This is basically all combinations of x square y and then over x, y, z. Okay, but what you want is a, b, c, right? Fret not, because if you multiply this, you notice that a, b, c appears. So this time you multiply a three equation, you get a, b, c over d cubed. And the right side of the equation, you get eight terms in the numerator. So you firstly get all combinations of the x square y term and then plus two copy of x, y, z. And fortunately, x, y, z over here is also in the denominator. So this right hand side is basically the equation above plus two. So this evaluates to 49 over three. Yeah, so this part becomes two. So you add 2 to 43 over 3, you get 49 over 3. And D you know is 3, so you move D cube over, and you get ABC equals to 441. So a neat little solution to this AIME problem, I challenge you to solve this problem without matter of weights, it is actually quite a lot harder. Now, let us finish off by tackling a classic geometry puzzle. So in this diagram over here, we have that we have the lines AD, BE, and CF drawn so that BD over DA, uh, BD over DC is 2 to 1, C over EA is 2 to 1, AF over FB is 2 to 1. And the question is, if this triangle is of area 1, what is the area of this triangle inside IJK? Yeah, so once again, we are dealing with ratio of lengths here. So it suggests that the method of weights is going to be useful. But so far, the method of weights deals with replicating one single point as the center of gravity. So over here, where we have a triangle, well, what you can do is first focus on one of the points, let's say I, and see what information you can deduce if we were to First, replicate I as the center of gravity. So to replicate I as the center of gravity, then what we need to do is we have AD is uh, AD cuts the side BC to 2 to 1 and CF cuts the side AB to 2 to 1. So we need 1 is to 2 here. That's why I put weight 1, weight 2 and then we need weight ratio 1 is to 2 here. So since this is weight 2, we put a weight 4 over here. Now, what can we deduce about uh, more re length ratios? So let's see if we can talk, deduce anything about AI over ID as NCI over IF. So indeed, the trick by now I think you might be quite familiar is you can now draw a line parallel to BC. And this let us see that uh, no, the weights on one side is 6 and the weight on the other side is 1. So the perpendicular distances are in the ratio 6 is to 1. And by similar triangle, AI over ID is therefore 6 is to 1. So same thing, we can draw a line here through I parallel to AB. 
then the weights on one side is 3, the weights on the other side is 4, so the perpendicular distance is 4 is to 3, and by similar triangle again, now CI over IF is 3 over 4. So we can obviously do this uh, over and over for J as the center of gravity or K as the center of gravity. So if J is the center of gravity and we repeat the entire process, we will learn that AJ over JD is 3 over 4. Okay, now the thing is, AJ over JD is 3 to 4, AI over ID is 6 to 1. So the ratio of lengths here along this line must be 3 is to 3 is to 1. And from here we are pretty much done. Uh, we can now use the ratios to deduce the area of IJK. So firstly, starting with the big triangle ABC, the base here is 2 is to uh, 1. So ABD, if we just look at the ratio of the base length then, tell us that triangle ABD is area 2 third. Then, now we look at AD as the base. So ABD, the base here is of length uh, 7 something. And then ABJ will be 3 over 7 of the, the area. Okay, so ABJ, the base is 3, AJ, and the base, the whole base AD is 7. So we have 2 third times 3 over 7 equals 2 over 7. So ABJ is 2 over 7. Similarly, you can uh, argue cyclically that AIC it's going to be 2 over 7, and CKB is also going to be 2 over 7. So by taking away the three parts of 2 over 7, what we are left is that triangle IJK is equals to 1 over 7. So that's all to this problem. And I hope you found this method of weights really interesting, and you can look forward to applying them in your own Olympiad problems. So stay tuned to the channel for more math videos, and I'll see you in the next one.